So today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of a kind of package I've never really received before. This is from AMD and it is a, an FPP sample program kit. There's nothing on the outside of the packaging besides that label on the front. So let's go ahead and get it opened up. So here we see some information about AMD's Lano or their Fusion APUs. We have the AMD A4, A6, and A8. So these are all APUs. That means they have a CPU and a GPU component on the same package of varying performance levels. So let's go ahead and keep opening it up. This is kind of a throwback color. Reminds me of the Athlon 64. That was the, uh, the orange packaging color that they used for that particular processor in the AMD logo. So, first let's see what AMD has to say for themselves. A discreet graphics experience without the cost of an additional component, plus support for DirectX 11 optimizations. This is a much bigger deal than you'd think, because sure, a low-end discreet graphics card isn't going to run all the latest DirectX 11 games at high details and 2560 by 1600 resolution, but you do get support for things like Direct Compute, where your GPU on the CPU can actually assist it with certain uh, functionality. All right, dual graphics boosts visual performance up to 75%. So what's dual graphics? Dual graphics is similar to what we used to call hybrid crossfire, where the chipset had a GPU on it, and then that could work with and uh, a standalone PCIe graphics card. So in this case, some of the lower end AMD graphics cards are actually capable of working in what they call now dual graphics mode to improve the performance in DirectX 10 and DirectX 11 titles by using them together. Next, we have multi-core processing with up to four high performance cores plus AMD Turbo Core technology for optimized performance where it's needed most. So multi-core processing. What that means is we've got uh, up to four CPU cores on here that are each a slightly more efficient than an older Athlon uh, X2 or Athlon 2X4, sorry, Athlon 2X4. So the older Athlon cores, these A4, A6, and A8 cores are slightly more efficient, especially the A8s because they do have the best onboard graphics as well as a little bit more cache or certain other uh, higher end features compared to the other ones. So what else we got in here? We have an AMD mug that says, this is charming, I heart APU. <laughs> All right, we've got a shirt, which is probably a large. Oh, it's an extra large, so obviously it's not going to fit me. But it has uh, some kind of explosion on it. I am the first. Okay. And then we have a piece of paper. Let's see. Yep saying what's in here. There's an S2 heatsink. No, nope, we don't want to look at this necessarily. And then let's see if there's anything else in here that might be interesting. Well, that's pretty much it. There's a copy of, of this as well. And then we also have a motherboard inside. So why don't we make this the unboxing for the A8 APU as well. I'm going to do this motherboard separately. This is a socket FM1 motherboard to go with a socket FM1 APU. Now, FM1 is different from the AM2, AM3 family of processor sockets. So you do need a new motherboard in order to take advantage of an APU. So let's go ahead and see what AMD has to say for themselves on the outside of the CPU box. You can combine it with DirectX 11 graphics cards. These ones, 6450, 6570, as well as the 6670. Okay, on the back we see the usual spiel. Okay, unrivaled DirectX 11 support, revolutionary APU, harnesses the power of unrivaled discrete level AMD Radeon HD graphics, small energy efficient design. Yes, that's one of the things that's actually really cool about the APU design is that the idle power consumption compared to its closest competitor from the blue side is actually significantly better due to the fact that they've taken away so many components by building the graphics chip right onto the CPU at a very highly integrated level. So let's have a look at the heatsink. And I think you guys are going to be quite surprised to see the heatsink for this new AMD socket. There you have it. It looks just like a heatsink for any other AMD socket from like the last six years or so, uh, going all the way back to uh, socket 754, where you've got the two clips on either side, okay, you got some fins, you got a copper slug. What that means is that you can actually use your old 
heat sink solution, as long as it's rated for a TDP up to 100 watts, remember, these do have a graphics chip on them as well, so they kick out a little bit more heat than a standalone CPU would. So that's why the higher TDP, even though the overall system power consumption will still be very, very low. So you can use any properly rated heat sink that was compatible with like, pretty much realistically, if you still own it and it's still high performance, you can use it on your APU. Very cool. Oh, it has a PWM fan, in case you guys were wondering. So that's a four pin fan. And next we have uh, some kind of paper documentation showing different sockets. Okay. I haven't seen a socket FM1 yet, but I will soon. So I'll be telling you guys all about that in my motherboard unboxings. I'm going to do a few FM1 motherboards. And there it is. There is the A8 3800 series APU. So it looks pretty much like any other AMD chip from the last little while. Ooh, the pin pattern, though. That is uh, noticeably different. And you can see, actually, oh, cool, look at that. So it has a dot here marking it. It has the usual triangle marking this one, and then it has a dot on the other side, and no dot here. So my guess is that that's going to be a lot to do with making sure it's oriented correctly in the motherboard socket. Last but not least, we have an AMD Vision sticker, which you can put on your case. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the AMD first APU. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.